Now it's recording. Uh, in the last class, we I, I give you the graph of the function, and you determine domain and range. Domain is the the projection of the point onto the x-axis because domain is associated with the x-axis and range is the projection onto the y axis because the range is the y bar. But now do they know? Today, today we determine domain using the equation. This is important, guys. It's a one question in the test. Determine the domain using the equation. So one one equation is given and you determine the domain. Let me let me try to explain the theoretical part. Uh -huh. okay, you need to apply the procedure. Okay, you need to apply always, anytime. You assume, you assume, you assume that okay, the domain, okay, you know domain, I want to repeat the, the idea, definition. Domain is a set of the X value in which the function is defined. See, it's undefined, no, it's completely out of the domain. So you, so you assume that the domain is equal to a real number in principle, except, except, except the restriction, restrictions. Uh -huh. And what about who is restriction? Well, restriction is when it's undefined. And we have basically three possibilities to be on the five, one, two, three, is when you have, for example, in the fraction P over Q, P and Q represent, you know, expression, and P over Q is a, is a function, I suppose, and uh, the restriction in this case is when a Q, you put it here, semicolon, Q is different to zero. The P do not participate, Q yes, because you know, what is the reason, because you know, Get division by zero, P divided by zero is completely undefined. So you need to avoid that situation. How you avoid the, the situation? You declare the restriction, okay, the restriction is Q not zero. Okay? Uh -huh. Don't worry because in the example I bring after that, you see clear this idea. Okay, the second restriction, uh -huh. Hi, the professor, sorry, be okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. But it's a bang and no comment, Dylan. It's okay, you, you are good at the student, I know. So a square root, suppose that you have a square root E, E represents expression. So I know that this, uh, the restriction in this case is when the E is positive or zero, so non negative. Why? Because I know the square root negative number is imaginary. Ah, uh, in this chapter, no. In this chat, we uh, only uh, working with the real number. Okay, this is all real number. This is this is we already say all real number. So now this belong to the another 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 planet, imaginary planet, imaginary numbers, another field, and so now you need to avoid that situation. Okay, so now remember uh, radical. The expression and the and the, the inside the radical must be non-negative. And basically, when you are doing this restriction, the thing that you should do is solving this inequality. Inequality, inequality. Now we have a combination of this and this together. Three is one and two together. That's when you have, for example, P divided by radical E. It's a radical, but a radical in the denominator. Then the restriction is the expression E must be positive. Zero, no, because zero is the case one. No? Now you know it's illegal. Okay, so the, basically, this is the three restrictions that we have so far. I promise in the chapter four we see one more. But no, 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 so far three restrictions, but the problem is they are combinations. Because in the real life problem, you see combination of this. Okay, now this is important. Take a picture of this. Because this is important, remember this idea. Let's move on. Any questions so far? Everyone follow me? Okay, but I want to see example, Professor. Okay, okay. Let's do it now. Example one. Determine the domain when the one equation is given. Look. 
uh, suppose this function. Example one. Example one. F of x is my function. It's given by x plus four divided by x squared minus two x minus three. Okay. So you see, wow, it's a fraction. Yeah, remember the restriction number one gets p divided by q, no? Uh, Sq, no zero. You apply this restriction. Okay, so you take, you take the expression at the bottom and you put, enforce it to be no zero. No zero, no zero. This is the idea here. He, the, the student asked me, professor, he, I don't care the top part, no. No, no, the, the, and, and the top part in this moment is completely irrelevant. I don't care. To the determine domain, no. Okay, so how you solve this inequality? Well, well, well. I, have, I am familiar, super familiar with the quadratic equation like that. A temporary, I convert to equation. You solve in this equation, uh huh, and this equation give me the good guys. Actually, this and the inequality become like a bad guys because no equal the restrictions. This equation, well, 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 you can solve them by the quadratic formula ABC, or in this case, I suppose it's much better, more easier, more quick, quickly doing by factorization because the combination is three and one. Three times one is okay, three, and somehow three minus one is two. What sign? Negative three and positive one. Uh -huh. Do you see that? Or you prefer again doing for you using the quadratic formula? Okay, it's okay by factorization. Remember, what, what is my recommendation? My recommendation is you expand, uh -huh, you expand two seconds, only two, not three. See, you see the factorization. See, you don't see the factorization. Okay, let's do it by ABC formula, quadratic formula. However, however, uh, Melanie, I put a mute for you and the microphone. And if, for example, if you see the combination, one of those is, in my opinion, is easier doing by that way. Okay? So now you're solving by this. This is x minus 3 equals 0. That's mean x is positive 3. And x plus 1 equals to 0. x is negative 1. Uh huh. That's it. No, no. Actually, actually, remember the thing that we are doing was different, different. So it's different here and different here. The reason I put equal is because I feel more comfortable solving the equation, no inequality. Well, actually, it's the same. It's the same. Okay. So let me try to interpret this. This is my domain, geometric interpretation. This is the line that represents all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Zero in the middle. Three is here. One, two, three. And negative one is here. Negative one. So basically, our domain is all real number, all real number, all real number. Except the bad guy in this game is positive three and negative one. How you interpret this? Well, okay, okay. We have we have here. Let me use in green color. Maybe we have one hole here, and we have one hole here. And the rest is okay. The rest is okay. This number, this number, and this number. Okay, and this continues forever in that direction. And it's continued forever in that direction. Uh -huh. so the representation in the interval notation is basically the notation that we ask you, can you ask you always in the test, Professor, why do you cancel x plus 4? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good question. After I want to explain this. But don't interrupt me now. Uh, uh, what happened in negative 1 and positive 3? Ah, you put part. Remember the symbolic way of 
exclude the void. So what is the answer? What is the final answer? The final answer in interval notation is answer. From negative infinity, comma, negative one, parenthesis, no including negative one, and negative one is bad guy, union, we have three pieces. Uh, negative one, comma, positive three, union, positive three, comma three. This is the answer. This is, a, the, this is the domain of that function. Uh, to answer the question, what is the reason that I do not consider x plus 4? It's because in the restriction I explained at the beginning, look at that, okay, the restriction, remember, restriction is I try to find the value in which the function is f of x to be undefined, undefined. On the fine mean error, mistake. Uh -huh. Entonces, the false, the, the reason que son the fine is when the denominator is zero. Y entonces, si the numerero es zero, I don't care. Because zero divided by any number is zero. However, any number divided by zero, oh, 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 it's on the fine. But my, my, my objective, my goal is determ determined on the fine. Therefore, I investigate the zero of the denominator part. Clear, Dylan? Aha, uh -huh, I got it. Okay. So keep in mind, guys. Any question about the first example? I bring a lot of because you need to be ready for the test. You need to be ready to and the test one question like that, only one. The question is given, and you need to determine the domain. And so now combinations. Combination fraction was the first example. The second example is radical. Suppose the function g is equal square root 3 minus 2x. And again, the same question. Find the domain. 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 Range should know. Range is more complicated. And so now I never, when this equation, I never, I never ask you the range. Graphically, yes, because it's easy to see. But okay, analytically, algebraically, no, only domain. Okay, to so see, I applied the restriction number two that we studied. Restriction number two is when you have a radical e, e the expression e must be non negative. Non negative means greater than or equal to zero. So you take the expression inside the radical, I remove mentally the radical and you enforce it to be non-negative, greater than or equal to zero. Then you convert the problem in one inequality problem. An inequality problem, you solve it. Minus 2x, greater than or equal to 3, but then minus 3, when they move to the, to the right-hand side, divided by negative 2, uh -huh, x, I saw for x, uh, this is 3 half, or in decimal, 1.5, to see more, more clear in the graphic part. And of course, don't forget, please, reverse it, the inequality sign, because you are divided by negative number. Always, if you are divided by negative number, you need to reverse it, the inequality sign. Uh -huh. Let me try to understand the domain graphically, geometric interpretation, infinity positive, infinity negative, Zero here, this is one, this is two, and 1.5 lie here in the middle. Look here, 1.5. Uh -huh. So it's less than, less than, less than, less than, less than, less than is to the left, no, to the left, to the left like that, to the left, less than or equal. So include, 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 include 1.5. This is what a symbolic way to indicate that bracket. Okay, what's the answer? Well, the answer is, answer is a parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, 1.5 or 3 half, either way, fraction or decimal equivalent, bracket. End of story. Aha. I want to take advantage to uh, verify, so I want to prove okay, this idea. What is, the, what is the idea for the domain? Professor, I am confused. I don't understand very well what means domain. Suppose that I select two. Suppose that I select two. 
que tú, obviamente, according to this analysis, es totally out de tu mente. ¿Ok? ¿Plugin? ¿Y en tú? ¿Y en tú es square root? 3 minus 2 times 2. 2 times 2 es 4. 3 minus 4 es negative 1. And square root negative 1 es i. Es imaginary. Therefore, it's completely undefined. If you see inside the uh, real number. The i is completely outside. It's in another field. Uh -huh. Suppose 0. Suppose 0. Que 0. Technically, it's inside the domain. Plug it in on 1 or negative 1, blah, blah, blah. You plug it in. G is 0. G is 0 is square root 3 minus 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Entonces es radical 3. And radical 3 is real number. It's okay. It's weird. It's irrational. I understand. But it's not imaginary like that. More clear or, or confusing? Understood. Very well, understood. Okay, 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 nice. I like that. But I bring a lot of examples because I need to make sure that you understand very well. Okay, example three is the third possibility. It's when you have a radical, but a radical in the denominator, no? Uh -huh. So example three is the function h of x. Remember the function and the function notation, your specification, one letter or two letters or three letters, the specification, the name. This is the name of the function. And normally the letter we use in coding algebra is f, g, h, p, t, uh -huh. is 4 over square root x minus 9. Again, determine the domain. Find the domain. Is the goal in this problem. Find domain. Okay, so I remember at the beginning when they start today the leisure, restriction number two is P over radical E, semicolon, E must be positive, not equal, because equal is zero, division by zero is illegal, but expression inside the radical negative is also illegal. You need to avoid this situation. So you take the expression x minus 9 greater than 0. Because it's just greater than 0. Look, this is the idea. Okay, now solve this elementary inequality. I move 9 to the other side. Boom, done. Let me try to represent geometrically. This is no completely mandatory, this is totally optional. This is the tool that in my mind I create to see. Because one picture is much better than 1,000 words of symbol. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, here. The domain is that part, to the right. Including nine, no? No, 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 no. Because I don't see any equal sign. How you represent this in interval notation? Parenthesis 9, comma infinity. Nice. So, it's the answer. It's okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's no big deal. Now I want to complicate a little bit. Because we see restriction 1, restriction 2, and restriction 3. And what happens when you have combination of the restrictions? Well, okay, it's similar. Okay. Let me let me put example four. It's a little bit weird, but it's important to cover that. Example four is look look look. So function p is x over x squared plus one. Oh, again, professor, you repeat fraction. Fraction a restriction one p divided by q semicolon q no zero. Okay, so I take, as always, the expression in the denominator, this one. Take this. This, no. No important. No important. I take x squared plus 1, and I put equal, no equal to 0. I investigate what, what happened here. Uh -huh. One more time, I don't like this symbol. 
It's confusing for me. However, I am strong. So the quadratic equation, because actually this is a quadratic equation. No? When you remove this line, it's no equal. Now it's equal, this is a quadratic equation. Oh, this quadratic equation is easy because B is zero. Yeah, I know that when the B is zero, the super efficiency way to solve this equation is mm, using the square root method. So you move, you move this one to the right hand side like a negative one, you apply square root both sides. Either way, but this is the best way. X is equal plus or minus, and square root negative one si. Again, it's imaginary numbers. Uh -huh. Therefore, to say I discover, I discover, I discover, okay, I try to do my best. However, the answer that I get is imaginary. So I try to find restrictions. Restriction is the bad guy. Restriction is hello, professor, had issue joint, able to join. Okay, okay. Okay, Katane. Uh, okay, repetition again, the idea. Uh, at the beginning, I have no idea. I take, I identify as a fraction. You take the expression and the denominator. I, I put like equation, I solve the equation. However, I get imaginary number. And this is what is the meaning of that? What, what, what means that? That means that the restriction is in the imaginary field, no in the real field. Therefore, in the real field, we have no restriction. Uh -huh. Therefore, the domain is ordinary. Uh, how you express it is like that. Do you understand very well this idea? Always confusing. Let me repeat using another another words. You investigate. You apply the restriction guy goal number one, is when it's a fraction. I know. Okay, I take the expression in the denominator, I enforce it to be zero. Okay, this is algebra. No big deal. I saw in the quadratic equation. In this case, I saw it using the square root method. Uh huh. I, I discovered that the solution is imaginary, plus or minus i. And plus or minus i is a numbers, it's a numbers, but it's imaginary number. E, I want to find real number. And the real number does, does mean. In the real number, we have no restriction. See, we have no restriction because the domain is a real number. So, uh, uh, the most common function that uh, have no fraction or, or, or square root have no restriction. You see, we have no restriction is because the domain is a real. Okay? Okay, let me complicate a little bit more. Let me complicate how? When I complicate because uh, I want to apply combinations. So a combination. What mean combination? Well, well, combination example five is suppose that we have a function. This function is called f of x again. Case square root x plus four plus the square root x minus five. Uh -huh. Our function is a combination do rank. If you have to rank we have two restrictions, okay? And one more time, I recall restriction number two. Because remember, you have restriction number two is when the radical is but the radical in the numerator top. And restriction number three is when the radical is in the denominator. In this case, restriction number two because it's when the radical is in the numerator and the restriction is the expression E must be no negative. I copy that. What is the, what is the expression E? Is bueno, we have two x plus four, very now equal to zero, x minus five, very now equal to zero, two restriction, and you connecting by and why by and because you need to satisfy this condition and this condition both together. Well, to say you form a one compound inequality, can you know how you solve it because we study. In the chapter one, let's do it one by one separately, and finally we connect graphically. This is x 
Create a rank or equal negative four. Done. I finished that part. The only thing I do was move forward to the right hand side. Like why here? It's greater than or equal five. Okay. Now let's do it. As all we have been in the compound inequality, we finish in graphic because it's a little bit complicated. I need to connect in this interval, the 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 green interval and the yellow interval. Okay. So this is infinity negative. This is infinity positive. This is zero in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. And negative four here. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four here. Let's analyze one by one. Suppose the green part. The green part go from negative four, but to the right, because it's greater than. Uh huh. So I highlight in that way. That way. This continue forever and include a negative one. Because you see equal, include a negative one. This is the green part that represents that part. Let's move on to the yellow part that represents that part. Well, the yellow part, the yellow part is from five. It's similar, no? It's from five. Let me put it highlight not exactly on the green part. Because I don't want to confuse. To illustrate much better, no, in my opinion, I don't know. She's good or not. The, the, the yellow part extending from phi to infinity and here include, include phi. Okay? You can write here or either way. The way you can see much better to see. Now, this is an important moment, crucial moment. And, and, represent intersection and represent the common part that the green interval share with the yellow interval. In my opinion, it's totally the yellow interval because the yellow interval get from phi to infinity lie totally, totally, totally inside the green. This is what the final answer, Professor. Well, the final answer is domain of the function f is bracket phi infinity in the story. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let, let me try to understand much better. Let me pick arbitrary value uh -huh, and verification in the original function and, and, and investigate see the thing we are doing is, is correct or incorrect. Suppose, suppose, suppose can I pick one guy, one a totally arbitrary guy here, six. Okay, the six of course belong to this domain, no? because they belong to the yellow part, belong to the green part. Okay, move on, evaluate six. This is square root six plus four, okay, and square root six minus five. Uh, this function is square root 10. This is a real number. And this is 6 minus 5 and 1, square root of 1. It's the answer. It's real. Perfect. No problem, no undefined, no imaginary, no division by 0. Okay. Let's pick another number 0. Suppose, suppose pick 0. The 0 is totally outside this domain. Belong to the green part, but don't belong to the yellow part. Okay. Evaluate zero. Uh -huh. We use the domain with the five because it's always given by uh -huh, uh -huh. this is the idea, Dylan. But I, I want to I want to to prove, but it's the last time I want to prove. No, it's not mandatory to prove. You apply that procedure and that's it. This is this is one thing I try to apply or try to see apply to convince you. Okay, our our answer is correct. It's correct. Suppose zero. Square root zero yeah. plus four. Okay, 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 dear. Plus square root zero minus five. Look at that. Zero plus four is four. It's square root four is two. Nice. But you have here a square root negative five. Okay, it's imaginary. That is the reason 
que in this point zero imaginary value now fell. And of course, in another point here, it's a fail, both. Let's do it, for example, negative five. Suppose negative five. This is a square root, negative five plus four, plus a square root negative five minus five. This is square root negative one, gets i. And this is square root negative 10, case the i radical. Imaginary again. That is the reason that our domain is only the part. Our domain is the part. From five to three. A ver, opinion. Yo, si es clear, son up. Ajá, así. Good. I like this class because you understand better than everything. Clear, clear. This is Dylan, is clear. Dylan support me always. Okay, let's move on to another more, more complicated, more complicated, more complicated. Example six. I dedicate and collect. It determines the domain when you have a function. Suppose G again. And G is square root 2x plus 1 over x minus 4. So we have combination. We have combination because because we have the radical in the top and we have fraction. Okay, so we have a combination to restriction. Let me recall one more time. Restriction number one say the restriction is Q, no C. Who is Q? In my example. Well, well, Q is this expression. Okay, therefore, the first restriction is X minus 4, no zero. And because we have another, suppose that we have another restriction, you connect it by and, by and, by and, always by and. Uh huh. And so now the second restriction say when you have radical E, uh, the restriction is E must be no negative. Okay, so you take the expression and then inside the right, I get this, and you copy, 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 2x. Great enough, all good. And in this moment, we have compound inequality. And you need to solve. Remember, the solution is super easy. You separate it by one line, you solve it separately, and finally, we connect the graphically. So x no equal positive four. Okay, I finish. And what means that? Mm. Because so far we studied, we studied, for example, when it's greater than is to the right, or when it's less than is to the left. But no equal, what mean? I don't, I'm confused. Well, no, the idea is clear. The idea is look, in four, one, two, three, four, we have a whole. We have a whole whole like that. Look, a whole like that. Okay, because four, you plug any G and four. Look at that. Look at that. G and four. I don't care what happened in the top. In the top we have a number, but in the bottom we have four minus four, and four minus four is zero, and division by zero, any number divided by zero is obvious. It's on the file. Error. Because to avoid this, you put a hole here. The domain don't include four. Four is a bad guy. Aha, uh -huh. let me solve in this part now. Two X greater than or equal negative one divided by two divided by two. X this is negative one half. And the inequality sign stay the same because you are divided by positive. When you divide by negative when you reverse. In this case, no reverse. The one half I suppose is here. One half. And between zero and one, no, this is one, this is two, this is three, right? Okay, this is greater than, greater than, this is greater than is, 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 from, so to the right, to the right, include negative one half. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is negative one, no positive one half. 
Mistake, mistake, my mistake, my mistake, my mistake. Okay. Entonces, this is negative one. This is zero. This is negative one half is here. Sorry. Now, my domain is from, 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 from negative one half to infinity, but in the middle of the interval, I found a hole. Therefore, the domain is that part. It's obvious we don't touch for so the symbolic way to indicate this idea is parenthesis, parenthesis, and we continue forever in that direction. Okay. So what is my answer? What is my final answer? Well, my final answer is expressed in two pieces. Unfortunately, the first piece is negative one half, comma four, parenthesis, union, four comma four. In the story. So the new thing that bring me this example six was that you have two restrictions. No? One restriction is fraction, another restriction is radical. But radical in the top. When it's radical in the bottom, mm -mm. radical in the bottom, let me recall. Number three, suppose P divided by radical E. The restriction is E positive. No C. In this case, no. In this case, I consider equal, like this, because I have the top. Okay. Okay, I have two more, and that's it. Two more examples, because we need time for another topic I want to cover today. But this is important and complicated example. Example seven. Oh, it's seven. It's seven, yes, I guess so. Example seven uh -huh, is P. The function is, the name is P. P is equal a fraction square root 2x plus 3 square root x minus 4 minus 8. Wow, what the hell is that? This is 4. Well, I, I can see I can see in this problem three restrictions. Number one restriction fraction. Fraction is q no c who is q in our problem well, q is the denominator expression this expression this entire expression so i take that so it says square root x minus four minus eight outside the right no c this is my first restriction the second what is the second restriction well, the second restriction is right on the top no negative who is who is who is this this you take and, and you connect it by and remember you need to satisfy this restriction and this restriction and because we have another restriction okay, the other restriction is the other radical we have in the denominator no? okay, is this uh -huh. Entonces, es x menos 4 de la danza. Entonces, tenemos un big compound inequality. Un uh, big compound inequality. Uh -huh. Maybe some is about overlap. I don't care. So, let me start for this. Bueno, this is easy because remember, when I confuse in, with this symbol, immediately I replace by equal. I know that this statement is the negation of this, this statement. So the good guy in the equation is the bad guy in the inequality. It's a negation. And so you consider that this equation is like a radical equation, no? And so you isolate the radical. Square both sides, because I want to eliminate the, the radical. X minus 4 equals 64. Therefore, x is 64 plus 4 is 68. Actually, actually, this is no equal, no equal, no equal, no equal, no equal. That means, in 68, in 68, we have, we have a whole. Okay? No matter. 
We have another example now. This is the last one. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, now, um, let's move on to the second inequality. Uh, second inequality is 2x. We are now we call minus 3. Divided by 2. X is greater than or equal to negative 3 half. 3 half and decimal is 1.5. I put in decimal because in decimal is easy, at least for me to see in the number line. And finally, this is X right now. Okay, ready. Ready to, to implement the graphic part. Visualize. Okay, say help me to visualize the domain. Okay, this is my famous over number line. Infinity positive, infinity negative. Okay, zero in the middle. I suppose always 68. I suppose suppose here too far. 68. But I know in 68 we have a hole. We have a hole according to this idea. Uh huh. So now greater than, greater than, greater than. Greater than or equal negative. Okay, okay, okay. I'm confusing. It's a negative one. It's a negative. Two. It's a negative one. It's a negative. Two. And between negative one and negative two, one point five. Okay. And so this is to the to the left, no? To the to, to the right because it's greater than. So greater than is to the right. Let me use green color. I don't know why I like green color. It's in that direction. But on occur, skip all. And continue forever. Uh -huh. And now include include 1.5 negative 1.5 because it's equal. It's equal indicate me bracket square bracket. And what about four? What about four? Well, four is here. One, two, three, four. Four is here. And again is. Uh, It's to the right. It's to the right. Let me use another color, green color, uh, yellow color, maybe. It's in that direction. Again, skip that. Okay. And in this case, no. More than or equal four. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equal, equal. Yeah, yeah. Equal, equal. Yeah, in this case, it's equal. Because the consideration. Yeah, yeah, and this case is equal. You are right, Dylan. You are right. It's confusing. You say profess or writing and the denominator. Well, writing and the denominator when it's alone. But in this case, I consider it. Si, si you have a writing and another number here or another expression, no. It's greater. You are right, Dylan. To so say this a restriction avoid complex number. Produce complex or imaginary number for this rank. But the zero and the denominator is considered in this reference. Good idea. Okay, this is okay. Yellow, 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 bracket here, bracket, bracket yellow, and this continues forever. Here is the part of course here, parenthesis, parenthesis, you know. Uh, and the blue part, I forgot, is parenthesis, parenthesis here, right? Okay, this is the 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 the, the uh, representation, the graphic representation. This inequality is a whole. This inequality is the green part, and this inequality is the yellow part. Okay, this is what my final answer. The final answer is the intersection. It's the part that everything share. So intersection, common element. So I can see that the common element, in my opinion. Is from four, including four, of course, including four to sixty-eight. Not including sixty-eight, comma sixty-eight, comma infinity. Something like that. Ah, beautiful. This dance. So in this case, was a little bit confusing because uh, no, I, I write at the beginning is greater than no, 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 no good. Because this happens if you have, for example, a square root x minus 4 alone. But in this problem, no. In the problem, you have minus 8. So the consideration gets division by 0 is this. This, this, 
de detecting the value que give me real value in the right and the top. And it's detecting detecting the value que give me real value in the second graph. Super. Any question, guys? Okay, does I want to present to you? Present to you. So in the in the in the in the email que I sent today. I sent one document. This document anytime we can use it in the in the test. Y en your work with the Alex. Es the collection of the most important function que we are studying in college algebra. So, this is a common function in college algebra. I want to describe a little bit, one by one. Okay, uh, name, constant, identity, square, cubic, square root, cubic root, reciprocal, absolute value, and greatest integer function. This is a little bit weird. I want to explain, but not important. The most important is the rest. The rest is important. The student can take college algebra, need to know by memory, name of this function, equation, equation, this is function, but it's actually it's equation, equation, and graph. So you need to know approximately who, who look like the graph. Well, the first one is contact. Contact is a horizontal line. So, f of x equal b it's equivalent to say y equal b and who is b b is an arbitrary number b is equal 4 20 this is, this is a horizontal line you see horizontal line this horizontal line the domain is a real number because we have no restriction we have no reciprocal no fraction no square root Nice. And the range is only one value because why give me one value get B? It could be arbitrary, guys, but it's a number. Okay. But I want to study one by one. Second, linear. The function f of x equal x is equivalent to say y equal x. It's a line. It's a straight line passing through the origin. Domain is again or real number. It's a nice function. No restriction, no division, no radical. And the range is also or real number. For the students that don't understand very well, suppose, 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 we have a line. Shoot, shoot. This is my graph. Let me use another color. X, Y. Uh -huh. This is the line. This is the function y equal x. You pick arbitrary point. You project it onto the x-axis. Okay? And the positive part and the negative part. Give me what? Give me all real number. This is domain. Likewise, you project it onto the y-axis. And it is the range. The range is also all real number. This is it, right? Okay, that, that function is a nice function. It's, you know, no complicated function, super nice function. You yeah. have no, uh -huh. you have no doubt to understand that obviously the domain range is all random. Okay, good. Now let's continue quickly because the idea is to be ready to understand another more complicated thing. Basically, not exactly today, but I present to you the collection of the most important functions that we are doing something that we study next class, maybe, and call it algebra. What is the second function? The square function. The square is a parabola. Parabola. Parabola look like, like that. Parabola. The basic parabola. This is the basic parabola. Look like, like that. 
Uh -huh. It's typical even foods. Because the symmetric, I, I promise you in one moment I study and detail even foods. Symmetric with respect to the words. Suppose that you, you make a reflection. The parabola stays the same because you only rotate the parabola here and stay the same. Other function, no. But the parabola, yes. Uh -huh. Does it domain for the parabola or real number? Because you pick point here and you project the onto the x axis, you see it is over a number. Look, positive and negative. Domain is over a number. Domain D is over a number. Range no. Range no. Why no? Because the barrel open in that direction. Open up. Open up. Because we have no parabola in the negative part. And remember, range is a y value. Does it include from zero is here to infinity. Zero comma infinity. But including zero, of course. Including zero, the touch physically zero to infinity. Everyone follow me? Quadratic. Square function. Square or quadratic? Uh-huh. Cubic. Uh, QB is similar. QB is similar. But QB the graph look like, like that. Uh -huh. so you have time. I encourage you to go to Desmos. Well, no, no. Actually, I have one script in Desmos to explain this in detail. I want to send you. And you open, open any function. The cubic uh, function, the graph look like like if it's, it's like a, it's like a two half of parabola. Uh -huh. Entonces, what is the domain? Well, the domain is over a number again. Look. Positive and negative. Because when you pick up a gradient value and you project it here, or pick a big value here and pick here, we get over. Here. However, uh, different to the parabola, the regular quadratic parabola, the, the, the range is over a number also. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again. Do you see the difference between this and this? Parabola quadrati open in one direction, in this case, onward. Uh -huh. We see what happens when you transform it. I don't know, it's another topic today. Transformation is one topic that we study in detail. Next class. Okay, parabola, QB parabola, QB parabola, domain and range, domain and range, domain and range. This is the most typical function that you need to be familiar in color algebra. Next one. What is the next one? Oh, the next one is a, is a square root function. Oh, this is important. F of x is a square root x. Okay. Uh -huh. Does the square root x day graph look like, like that? X, y. The graph look like approximately, you know, like that. Uh -huh. Does it way, way, professor, but I don't understand. We have no negative part. No. Because it's obvious that the domain, so if you apply restriction, x is greater than or equal to zero. That means that the domain, domain is bracket zero or my infinity. Because when you plug in here a negative number, give me imaginary number. No, no. Domain is this part. Look. Okay, include zero, of course, include zero. Touch. The, the way to represent this is using bracket. And what about range? Range is exactly the same. Bracket zero from infinity. Uh -huh, because the range is the y value, the, y, the function is defined as this. Okay, we have no, no point only in the first quadrant. When you pick here and you pick here, positive value, positive value, positive value, positive value. Never negative in all the point. 
Okay, this is the domain range of the square root function. It's important, guys. It's important. I'm trying to, it's no big deal to memorize this. Let me see cubic function. Cubic function. Wow, cubic function is similar. Look, look. Is no, no, no. Cubic, cubic is like that. Cubic root of x. Aha. Uh -huh. And the graph of the another root for root, fifth root, is similar and um, separate like the even index. Guess okay, this. This this parabola is or this actually this is half of the parabola but open to the right no over is is similar in the even so like a four root six foot and so on. and this is similar in the fifth root and the seventh root so the, the graph is different look at that look at that the graph is different the graph of the beauty root is different is like that. That part is similar to this, but you have exactly symmetric the negative part. This is a classical odd function. Don't be scared with the, with the name odd. I need it because one lecture I explained it. What is the idea for the even? But the important thing now is determine domain range. Domain is over a number. Look at that, the positive guy. The negative guy. And uh, the range is over a number also. The positive guy and the negative guy. This is the differences between the root that contain even and the root that contain odd. In this case, let me repeat again. The domain and range is only the positive number. Uh -huh, and this no, including positive and negative. Okay, well, what is the reason? Professor, I don't understand very well. Okay, okay, let me explain. For example, cubic root, negative 27 is negative 3. Why? Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 and negative 27 is exactly the same number inside the radical. Uh -huh. Of course, positive happen exactly the same, but it's positive 3, no? By the same reason, no? Similar. Different situation happen in the square root. Square root 16, oh, a 4. And square root negative 16, oh, no, no, a 4, i. Plus or minus. Okay? Plus or minus. Uh huh. And when it's negative inside the radical, and the index of the radical is even number, we have imaginary number. Here, never we have imaginary. You get the idea? Okay. Okay. This is very interesting, very important. That is the reason I suppose you remember when we study the radical equation. Okay, we need to check in when the index is even, and you don't need to check in never when the index is odd. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next. Next is reciprocal. Reciprocal function is f of x is equal 1 over x. Okay, the graph of this is a little bit weird. It's a hyperbola. But don't worry for this name. See, you take pre calculus, I explain it, the hyperbola. No, 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 no. It look like that. What is the only restriction in this case? Well, it's a fraction, and restriction is when the x is no zero. In this case, we have one thing is called vertical asymptote. But don't worry for this vertical asymptote. Because they, they vertical asymptote. Don't worry for the asymptote because in, in the in the chapter three we study the, the asymptote. Uh -huh. But it's basically the only guy that to be undefined is in zero. The rest is okay. So the domain is the domain is the domain is the domain is all real number all real number except zero and zero we have a whole number. because one over zero is undefined. 
Okay, I need to avoid this. Likewise, likewise or similar, the range is all real number except zero because you never obtain zero. Zero is the bad guy in this function. Okay, conclusion, domain. Domain is from negative infinity, comma zero, no including zero, union, zero comma infinity. It's exactly the yellow part, okay, highlight. And the range, exactly the same. Okay, the reciprocal function, this is reciprocal. Look at that, reciprocal function. The graph look like here is the typical hyperbola. You don't care, this is a technical name, hyperbola. A problem is you need to take pre-calculus, or oh, see pre-calculus, yes. You see, oh, so Mark 11, 40, or oh, Mark 11, 47, the two version of the pre-calculus in college, in this sense. Okay, let's let's do actual value. Actual value is nice, it's fantastic. The actual value, actual value, actual value is the function that I want to call f of x. f of x equal, and this in body way, bar x. Uh -huh. How look like the graph of the actual value? Well, look like that. Like, like a b, it's linear in that direction, and another linear in another direction. Okay, this is like a y equal x, and it's a y equal minus x. Uh -huh, but it depends, no? Because the line y equal x is standing here. Pero no, 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 no. Absolute value is, is only that part. So absolute value is. So I try to define the idea of the actual value. Actual value is, look, is y equal x if x is positive. So but x positive, get that part. Is the line y equal x. However, uh, negative part, you change the sign, minus f, if x is negative. Uh, this is part of the domain. Uh, and, and what about equal to zero? Well, equal to zero, you can include it in any way, but because zero has no sign, positive zero, negative zero. The, 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 the mathematicians believe it's much better, more elegant doing it. Therefore, the domain, the domain, the domain of the